Come on, how many believe that you are the seed of Abraham? Come on, that there is an inheritance waiting for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Here's the thing. You've got to be willing to go after it. You've got to be willing to go after it. You've got to go get it. Some of us are just waiting, thinking, oh, he'll bring it to me. No, no, no. You need to go after it. Come on. You need to make a move. Look at your neighbor and say, you got to make a move. Come on. you got to make a move. Amen. Amen. How many believe when you make a move, he makes a move? He said, if you, then I'll. If you give, I'll give. If you bless, I'll bless. Well, get your Bibles out. You got your Bibles? Hold them up. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, this is the word of God. This is my word. I believe it. I receive it from Genesis to Revelations. Everything, everything. It declares I receive. It declares I'm blessed, and I am blessed. It declares I'm healed, and I am healed. And today, I'm going to be taught the Word of God, and I will never, 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 never be the same in Jesus' name. Come on, if you believe it, shout hallelujah. Yes, amen. Well, just turn to your neighbor and say, I've got a feeling. Everything is going to be all right. I don't know who that's for, but let me say that again. I've got a feeling. Oh, everything. Come on, everything. Whatever it looks like on the left. What it might look like on the right. What it might look like in the front. What it might look like on the back. Everything is going to be all right. you get that stirring in your spirit I don't know if there's anybody full of faith in this house where, where are my faith filled people that came in here full of faith uh, saying our God is able our God can make a way where there seems to be no way oh yes he can well if you're new here we welcome you but you just stepped into a house full of faith And we know that we've seen blinded eyes open. We've seen the lame man walk. We've seen cancer eradicated. Come on, we've seen, uh, we just seen back pain healed. We've seen uh, uh, knee pain healed. We've seen so, we've seen homes restored. I don't know what you're in need for, but we know that our God is more than able. He is more than able. Amen. How many know that, that, that chapter where there were four men carrying the lame man, trying to get him to Jesus, and the crowd kept him out, but there was four. That said, we are going to get you into the presence of God no matter what. I'm telling you, that's what this church is. There is a core that says, you know what? We're going to get into the presence of God. We, We want you to have an encounter with the presence of God. We want you to have an encounter with the living Savior. We want you to have an encounter with the miracle worker. We want you to have an encounter with the life giver. We want you to have an encounter with that that can change everything in your life. Amen. And they they ripped off the roof. And the Bible says Jesus saw the lame man's faith. No. 
He said he saw their faith. The four that says, you know what, if we could just get them into their presence, uh, if we could just get them into the presence of Jesus, uh, he will be made whole. We know we're not going to have to carry you back home. Uh, we know that you are going to leave here changed and not the same way. What? It took their faith. Is there anybody that's here that says, you know what, I cannot live any longer without faith. I need, there, there was somebody in here that came and said, I need a word. I need a word to feed my faith because I'm at a place all I can do is live by faith. I cannot live by what's in my bank account. I cannot live by my career. I can't live by accolades. I can't live by my education. All I know what to do is live by faith. And I came seeking a word. I didn't come to listen to an opinion. I didn't come to listen to somebody to talk like TED Talks, I came to receive a word. Who is that for this morning that you said, I need a word. I need a word. I tell you, the Holy Spirit woke me up this morning. I, already, I had a message already written out about to share. And then 3 o'clock this morning, the Holy Spirit woke me up, shifted the whole thing. And uh, this, is, this is for somebody this morning because you've been praying. You've been praying. And it's going to continue. It's going to continue in the, in the vein that the Lord showed me a month ago about there's still more in 24. There's still more in 24. Some of you have already checked out this year. I'm telling you, hold on. There's still more in 24. Don't throw in the towel. Don't give up. There's still more. I, I love the fact what we read last week. Joshua, the Lord spoke to Joshua. He says, you're old and advanced in age. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Merle, happy birthday. It's her birthday today. If I look that good at 85, she's okay with it. Listen, if you look that good at 85, you'd be telling everybody your age too. She brought her family, got some family here. We welcome all of you. Thank you for being here today. We know there's trouble right here. I call Meryl trouble. I'm trying to be nice. It's your birthday, I know. Amen. But the Lord spoke to Joshua, and he said, you're old, advanced in years. How many know what the Lord's saying? You're old, you're old. But he says, there's still more land to possess. There's still more. And what was the Lord saying? He's saying, Joshua, do you still believe like you used to believe? Do you still believe, do you still have that different spirit on the inside of you that says we are more than able? It doesn't matter how old I am, we are still more than able. Amen. I don't know if that message was any, anybody but for me last week, but I, I, I received that message last week, and I hope you received it. If you, if you weren't here, go back and watch it. But I believe it's every little piece that the Holy Spirit is sharing is building our faith, building our expectation for what God is trying to do in our lives. Amen. I, I, I want to read 2 Kings. Go to 2 Kings. You got your Bibles? Okay, okay, okay. I was just making sure you're here today. 2 Kings chapter uh, 3 verse 9. And while we're going there, I'm going to go ahead and pray. We're going to pray for Trump. Come on, somebody. I don't care what, what side you're on. We better be on the Lord's side. Amen. Listen, that should have never happened. How many know that that was a plan of the devil? The devil's... Steal, kill, and destroy. 
I mean, no, the devil's after his life. Amen. We, we want to pray for him. We want to pray for Biden, President Biden. We want to pray for both. Because their life is always on the line. Amen. And so we need to pray for both. It doesn't matter what side you're on. You need to understand this. You better be on the Lord's side. Amen. And, and don't get caught up. Don't get caught up. Please don't get caught up in, in all the politics. Because what they want to try to do is get you divided. That's it. And if anger rises up in you, then you know you've been listening to the wrong voices. Amen. How many know the Lord exalts? And he puts in place. Amen. He chooses the kings. We just need to be in the right place, on our knees, the Bible says, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and what? Pray and turn, turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and what? Heal their land. He wants to heal your land. He wants to heal the land of America. But our, our position is we better get on our face. We better pray for our nation. Pray for the state of our nation. Amen. Pray for our president, whether he's the one you voted in or not. You need to pray for him. That's your position. Amen. Amen. I got three people that only agrees with that. Heavenly Father, we thank you today. Lord, I thank you right now. For Donald Trump, I thank you that your hand was upon his life. I thank you, Lord, right now you spared his life. And I thank you. I pray, Father God, that you will continue to put your hand upon him and that you will help guide him and direct him. And, Lord, I just pray a protection around him right now in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, I pray for President Biden. I pray over his life. I pray for a hedge of protection around him. I pray, Father God, that as he goes and travels around each and different cities, Lord, I just pray, Lord, you would be with them, and not only with him, but everyone around him. Lord, I just pray as they travel around, Lord, that everybody that goes to these functions, Lord, that they would be protected, that their, their lives will be protected right now in the name of Jesus and by the blood of the Lamb. Lord, we thank you today, Lord, that you, you reign. You reign. The Bible says, let the earth rejoice and be glad. And Lord, I thank you right now that you reign and we rejoice in it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Are you in 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 9? And so the king of Israel went with the king of Judah and the king of Edom. And they marched on and around about seven days. And there was no water for the army, nor for the animals that followed them. And the king of Israel said, Alas, for the Lord has called these three kings to get together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. I, I, I'm going to just, let me just stop right there because I, 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 there, I'm going to read all the way through 18, but there's so much to be said, and I'm just going to break it down as we get there. Amen? I, I want you to see something because here we got three kings together, and here I want you to see how they begin to see themselves when things dry up. When they find themselves in a valley and things have dried up, can, can I just tell you when things begin to dry up, if we're not careful, we'll have the wrong perspective. Here the king of Moab said, said this. He said, he said, the Lord has just brought us all together to deliver us in the hands of our enemy. Isn't that something? See, some of you have the wrong perspective because of how you perceive everything around you. 
And they're seeing everything drying up. They're seeing themselves in a valley. And he's saying, look, the Lord brought us all here so that the, our enemy can destroy us. Some of you, you think everything is drying up so that you can die right here. I'm, I'm telling you, that's a lie from the enemy. That's a lie from the pit of hell. You are not going to die. You will live. And God's got better days still ahead of you. You need to wake up and say, you know what? This is not the way it's going to end. God's got something in store for me. Amen. I want to read on in, in verse 11. Jehoshaphat said, is there not a prophet of the Lord that we may inquire of the Lord by him? I love the fact that he says, you know what? I, I heard what you're saying, but we need a word from God. I, I, I understand what it looks like, but I can tell you if we can get one word from God, it will change the way we see things. It will change the way we live. It will change the trajectory of our future. I love the fact that he says we need a word. Is there not a word? Is there not a prophet from the Lord uh, that can give us a word? Listen, not just any talk will do. You need a word. We settle for TED Talks. We settle for uh, YouTube Shorts. But you need a word. If you're in a situation and all you can see is trouble all around you, you need to get on your knees and say, I need a word. I need a word. Is there not a prophet? I don't need an opinion. I need a word. If you read on, it says, so, so, the, so one of the servants of the king of Israel answered and said, Elisha, the son of Saphat, is there, uh, is here who poured water on the hands of Elijah. I want you to see something here. He says, Elisha, the son of Saphat, is here. Now, you got to understand something. Elisha has not yet ever prophesied anything. But for some reason, his name is dropped among these kings. And notice what they point out. They said the servant that was with Elijah, the one that poured water, Upon his hands. What did they need? They needed water. Isn't it something? The very thing he got comfortable with. Pouring the water. Upon Elisha. Upon Elijah. Saying here you go. Here you go man of God. Here you go. And they said. They, they said he's the one that poured the water out. It wasn't, the, it wasn't the fact that he's, they said, well, he'd been prophesying with Elijah. He's been doing mighty miracles with Elijah. No, no, no. He was just a servant. Yeah. Can I just tell you, some of us, we despise the small things. Yeah. And we wonder why we're not getting in rooms with CEOs. You know, the, the, the beginning of this year, I said, some of you are going to get in rooms with CEOs. Y'all remember that statement? Some of you are going to be in rooms with, with wealth. But the key, I want you to see the key point right here. It's how, how are you serving? Because his name is dropped because of how he served. It wasn't because how he prophesied. 
It wasn't because how he healed a, a, a blind man. It wasn't because he, he fed 5,000. No, it was just because he, he served. We all want to be somebody, but he says the least of you will be great among us. And we try to, we try to be our big name. We try to be a superstar. And God is saying, what about your service? I'm, I'm wondering about your heart. I, I know you're looking on the outside, but I look at the heart. And I'm telling you, it's because he was a servant to the man of God. He was pouring the water on the man of God. That his name is being dropped. I wonder how many of us miss our names being dropped because we neglect the small things that God gave us. If you ain't faithful with little, you're not going to be faithful with much. Look at that. Just look how important Elisha is in their eyes saying he was the one that served Elijah. Elijah. He's the one that just poured water on him. He shows up. And, and, and I want you to see this, how, how he shows up. I love just kind of how he is. Let's go into uh, uh, verse 12. And Jehoshaphat said, the, the word of the Lord is with him. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat and the king of Edom went down to him. Uh, let, me, let me get to that part because I forgot about this part. You'll never hear the word with pride in your life. Notice these kings had to go where? They had to humble themselves and say, we got to go to the servant. We got to go to the one that just poured water upon Elijah. We got to get a word from him. Hallelujah. Isn't that something? Here, these kings had to first go down. The Holy Spirit says people that have pride in their life will never hear a word from God. They'll never hear the word. And when the word goes forth, it, it, just, not, it just not even register because they're not willing to go down. I love the fact that they, the Bible could have just said they went to him. But the fact the Bible says they had to go down to him tells me they had to change their posture. Are you willing to change your posture to hear the word? Are you willing to say, you know what, I don't know it all. I, I need to hear a word. It doesn't matter uh, if, if it comes from a servant. I, I need to hear a word. I wonder how many times a word is coming from somebody beneath us and we don't hear it because we don't walk humbly. Mm. Verse 13, then Elijah or Elisha said to the kings of Israel, what have I to do with you? Go to the prophets of your father and the prophets of your mother. I love this man of God. You got to understand, he, he, he's just rubbing it in their face. Why? Because all of their prophets of their mother and father is dead. Elijah killed them all. He's like, why don't you go to them? Oh, yeah, they're dead. He had some boldness. Speaking to some kings like this. In verse 14, and Elijah said, Alas, the Lord of hosts lives before whom I stand. Surely I would not, it would not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah. I would not look at you nor see you. Notice that. He said, if it, if it wasn't for Jehoshaphat, king of Judah. With well, Judah, what is Judah? Praise. If it wasn't for praise being here, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even be in the midst of you. 
But the fact that there's praise still here, I'm going to, I know there's going to be a work. He says, now bring me a musician. Bring me an anointed musician. And here, notice it. it. And it happened when the musician played. Can I just tell you, you better be careful what, what you're listening to. Because if there are sounds that can bring heaven into earth, how many know there are sounds that, that can bring hell into earth? And we think we can listen to Beyonce and be all right. Come on. You, you, you think you can listen to some of that, all of that stuff. You know what you're listening to. I'll let the, the Holy Spirit deal with you. Notice he didn't just, he didn't want any kind of music. He was asking King Jehoshaphat, I need a praiser. And it happened when the musician, what, began to play. Thus saith the Lord, make this valley full of ditches. For thus saith the Lord, you shall not see the wind, nor shall you see the rain, yet, notice that valley shall be filled with water so that your cattle and your animals may drink. Now, 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 now notice something. Go back, go back to the, the verse 16. It said, and thus saith the Lord, make this valley. And then it changed to that valley. If you do this, it will become I know some of you are so focused on that, but he's saying, if you just do this, if you just do this, if you would just pray, if you would just worship, if you would just praise, that will happen. What was, what's that? That breakthrough you've been praying for, that healing that you've been believing for, that will happen. But you got to do this before that. See, we're all focused on that, but we're not focused on this. He's saying, I need you to do something where you're at now. See, some of us, we, wanna, we just want to quickly move on. And we think the blessing is somewhere where we move on. And he said, no, no, the blessing is under your feet. The blessing is under your feet. I need you to dig where you're at now. The very dry place you're in, uh, dig a little deeper. Uh, dig a little deeper. Uh, what, is, what is digging? That means I, I'm just getting in my prayer life. Uh, I'm getting in my worship time. Uh, I'm giving in into a, into a daily devotional. Uh, I'm going into fasting uh, and praying uh, daily. Just saying, you know what? I'm just going to dig a little deeper. Why? Because I know there's going to be water. I just want to know, is there anybody saying, you know what, I don't care what it looks like, I'm going to just keep on digging. I know what the Lord said, keep on digging. Dig those ditches. Dig those ditches, and it will become that. I like this. This just popped out of me, too. He says, you won't see the wind. You won't see the rain. But you're going to see the benefits from the wind and the rain. I'm here to tell you there are going to be storms in life, but you're not going to have to experience it. Come on, I, I'm telling you there are going to be some storms in life, but you won't see it. And you won't feel it, but you're going to benefit from it. Oh, I don't know who I preach it to, but that storm that should have took you out, you didn't see it, you didn't feel it, and you're getting the benefit from it. 
Oh, everybody's looking at you saying, oh, I thought that storm, what storm? I thought that wind would have taken you out. I, I thought that rain would have taken you out. No, I just get to benefit from the wind. I, I get to benefit from the rain. I, I get the benefit. Ah, I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but the Lord's saying, I'm sparing you from the wind. Uh, you won't see the wind uh, and you won't see the rain, uh, but the ditches will be filled. He's saying it's going to be there, but you're not going to see it. You're not going to feel it. It's not going to take you out. Why is he saying it? Because he don't want you to worry about it. He don't want you to worry about how it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. There's still more. I don't know who I'm preaching to this morning, but you feel like you're in a dry season and you're looking around. How in the world am I going to get out of this? And the Lord is saying, just keep digging where you're at and you won't see the wind and you won't see the rain, but it will be full. You're going to benefit from it. You're going to benefit from it. Here's what happened. All of a sudden, now the water came in and they woke up in the morning and they saw the ditches filled. It came from another city and it flowed down into their valley and filled their ditches. I'm here to tell you, there's going to be streams from outside that are going to pour into you. Let me say that again. There are going to be streams from the outside that are going to be directed towards you all of a sudden God God's going to be lifting that dam saying okay it's time for them to, to go they made room for a miracle they dug for a miracle and now I can release the flow into their to their life I love the fact that it was filled and notice the enemy Got up that morning, and the Bible says the way the sun hit the water. How many know the sun will affect everything? The S-O-N will affect everything. And the Bible says it looked like blood. It didn't look like water. It looked like blood. How many know there's power in the blood. I don't know about you, but the blood works for me. I don't know about you, but the blood is in my favor. The blood is working for me. And the enemy sees it, and they say to each other, man, I tell you that, that, that those kings turned on each other. We can go and get the spoils. How many know the blood will set you up for victory? Come on, the blood will set you up. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, the neighbor, the blood will set you up for victory. Oh, yes. The blood will set you up for victory. So here, here they come thinking they're going to get the spoils. Not realizing they're going to get destroyed. Isn't that just like God? What the enemy meant for harm. God turned it around for your favor. Oh, the enemy thought he had him on the cross. And he saw the blood flowing. He said, we got him. 
Oh, we got him. We got him now. There's no more life in him. We got the king of kings. We killed him. Oh, there is no turning back. We got him. Can I just tell you that's what the enemy wants to say about you? Oh, we got you. Oh, there's no turning back now. But what he doesn't know, you're covered by the blood. Oh, there's victory in the blood of Jesus. It was said in the Bible, if they only knew, oh, if they only knew, they would have never crucified Can I just tell you, oh, you may see the enemy circling around you, but just know this. If you keep on digging, God will cause your enemies to fall right be right before you. It's a setup. Woo. All you see is provision. You see the water. You see the Lord provided. Your enemy sees, oh, we can go after them. Not realizing you've been provided for. (laughs) The price has already been paid. So anytime the enemy tries to come after you, Come after your health. Come after your family. Come after your household. Uh, You can plead the blood of Jesus uh, and say in the name of Jesus and by the blood of the Lamb, uh, you will not come into this house. Uh, You will not come into my household. Uh, You will not come into my family. Uh, You will not come into my health. I've been covered by the blood. Let's all stand. Let's all stand. If you do this here, you will get that. He said, dig this valley full of ditches. See, some of y'all are looking to move on. But he's saying, everything you need is just under your feet. If you would just dig. I, I remember, I remember the Sunday... Actually, it was a Saturday. My dad calls me. He says, you're going to have to do praise and worship. I'm like, what? I thought, man, this is not good. I've never, never led praise and worship in my life. But he said, son, you're going to have to do it today. Oh, okay. I, I, I never sang a solo. I, I sang on the praise team, but my mic was always off. Everyone had cables. Mine didn't have a cable. I just act like it was wireless. But I remember that Sunday. I walked in and and shared with the praise team. I said, hey, listen, um, our worship pastor, he's moving to Texas. He already left. He's going to school. And uh, my dad's going to have me do the worship for, for the time being. Over half of the worship team left. All my band left. All I had was my drummer and my mom. My mom wasn't playing the keys at the time, but she jumped on the keys to play. Isn't it amazing? I, I, I thought this was the death to me. But how many know God was still working it out? I got on my knees and I began to pray, Lord. Joshua had Caleb. I need a Caleb. Moses had an Aaron. I need an Aaron. Lord, help me. Give me somebody that can help me. The next Sunday, I announced, I said, hey, if you can sing or play an instrument, we're we're doing some tryouts. 
Well, that Sunday, Miss Lee's family was here. Not only Miss Lee's family, but Betsy and Sophie's family were here. They were sitting right over here. Just right over here. I, and and I, I saw them. They were new. And they were praising the Lord. I'm like, man, I like them over there. They're praising. Well, they, they tried out for the worship team. And her, her and her sister, Betsy and Sophie, and then um, some of their cousins were here. Uh, Will and, and, and uh, Junior and uh, Josh, they were, all, they were all here the Sunday I said, we're going to have tryouts. They came on that Sunday, I began to pray, Lord, I need help. I cannot do this by myself. And man, they served the worship department. How long, did, how long were you on the worship team? 16 16 years. Amazing. They were an answer to prayer. Now she's living in D.C. I keep on praying her back. But that's the power of getting on your knees, praying. God will provide. I didn't have to go out to look for it. He says, if you just dig right here, I will bring streams. Not knowing, where did y'all move from, boss? Where did you move from? You were, you were here, but I heard Jersey. I, I was listening to your mom tell the story about your brother. We, we, we had to do a homecoming uh, funeral for her brother this past weekend. And died at 36. Suffered all of his life. Lived his life to the fullest every day. You wouldn't know that he suffered one bit. He wouldn't show it on his face. He would get up here. He'd do poetry. He would do spoken word. He was a blessing to the body of Christ. And I tell you, this family was a blessing. But that was a stream God brought in. I didn't have to look out. He said, I'm bringing them in. You won't see it. You won't see it or feel it. But they're coming. Can I just speak that over you? They're coming in streams from the north, south, east, and the west. They're coming. Heavenly Father, I thank you right now. I'm not looking to the left or the right. I'm just digging deep because you said make this valley full of ditches. Lord, we come to you. We know we need a word from you. We know you're the provider. And Lord, I thank you. Lord, you make a way where there seems to be no way. And Lord, I thank you that we will not see the wind, nor will we see the rain, but we will benefit from the storm. Now, Father, I thank you right now for streams coming from the north, south, east, and the west into our lives, into our homes, into our families. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah.